Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, dear participants. Uh, today is the 75th lecture organized by ECG Study Group. And today's topic is Physiological Basis of ECG. And our speaker today is none other than Professor M. Atahali sir, who needs no introduction. Still then, I'd like to request Professor Abdul Wadi Chaudhary sir to speak some qualities of Atar Ali sir in brief, and then we start the lecture. Pardon, sir. Good evening, everybody, and assalamu alaikum. Today, uh, our favorite Atar Bhai is going to talk about the physiological basis of ECG. Uh, Atar Bhai is very much known to almost everybody related to cardiology in Bangladesh. One quality he possesses is that uh, I have known him since uh, 96. I have never found him angry. And we have tried, but we have failed always. He's cool, a very cool person. And perhaps this is one of the quality that has helped him to uh, become a very good specialist in electrophysiology where you need patience. And also you have to have an analytical mind. And we'll be seeing those qualities expressed perhaps in this today's lecture. Dear audience, let's uh, Professor Atar Ali's lecture. Atar Bhai, you can proceed. I just want to add something. So no, Atar no. actually was the best student in his class. That's, I mean, I worked with Atar very closely. Um, one thing interesting that we call each other Vai, and what happened in America one time that we got a letter. It says, dear Dr. Vai, because the guy thought that <laughs> last name is Vai. And then he asked, how come you all have the same last name? Anyway, thank you Atar, please continue. Okay, sir. As a, <clears throat> uh, good evening, dear participants. And first of all, I like to express my respect to Dr. Rufi Hamid, sir, Professor Abdullah Adud Chaudhary, Dr. Abdullah Jamil, Dr. Azul Hawk, Professor Abdul Salam. I think there is Azul Hawk by also, uh, Habizullah Hassan. So the main part of the today's lecture will be some ECG, that is the tracing after my lecture by Dr. Rufi Hamid, sir. I had to talk about the anatomy related to the ECG previously. I want to tell something about the physiology related to ECG today. So first of all, I'm going to share my screen. So sir, can you see the slides? Sir, it is not visual yet. The white screen is there and the pointer is running over the screen white screen mm. problem still the same thing sir Can you see the slide now? Mm, no, sir. Please share your screen, sir. Share, Hanni. For some reason, we are seeing the Facebook live screen.
Lo fixar. Lo fixar. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Sir, uh, meanwhile, sir is uh, operating his screen. Okay, sir, still, uh, other sir, still the white, only white uh, background. I'm trying really. Okay. Uh, Rufik, sir, just uh, I had a question. I have a question that we are now using smartphone to watch the ECG. Uh, many smartphone have the up app to see the ECG. So how does it act? Because in conventional ECG, we have to use leads, at least in the limbs, at least for the uh, limb lead. So, and the smart watch is only on the left hand or right hand, whatever it is. So how can it take that ECG? So a lot of the smartphone actually, you have to touch it with the other finger to get a good quality ECG. So um, most of the, the there is um, commercial available monitor, which is Cardia, you have to use two fingers. And the, some of the smartphones have um, uh, two lead. And I prefer that because you can see the P wave better. Uh, but I think electrical signal probably takes the two point and makes a discrimination. I, I don't really know the basic technology behind it. It suddenly came to my mind because we used to, we have to have at least right and left, left hand yep. to get some literal. So, sir, some slides dekhte bao? No. Sir, aki rakum sir, aki bhabe aati sir. Sir, on no kono presentation hai rekhe chilen ki sir? No, no, no. Okay, Atta. Sir, presentation take sir, I can run sir. Hmm? Presentation to sir, I can run for sir. Uh, Option is the basic component. Mm. I need to regular query, but the share screen. Ah. Are you ready, sir? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks, God. So I can start now, na? Yes, sir. So uh, sorry for the disturbance. Actually, uh, this is the physiological basis of PCC diagnosis, sir, and. Sir, this is one of the slide. I got it from Professor Margili, is a renowned cardiologist of Italy. Actually, he delivered a lecture in a ESC Congress in 2011. And his concept was that Copernicus revolution in solar system. Actually, this was the revolution as because this was the concept against the concept of Ptolemy. Ptolemy told that the earth at the center of the solar system, but Copernicus told that the sun at the center of the solar system and all the planets around around the... So this was the revolution of Copernicus over the Ptolemy in the 16th century. So this is the solar system. The, the solar system, existence of the solar system depends upon the existence of the sun. This was the concept of the Copernicus revolution and I got this slide from Professor Marzilli of Italy. And another slide I also got from it that this, the same electrical system, the same solar system is also existing in our body. That was the 
actually proposed by the Inthoven. He told that human body represents a large volume of conductor having the source of electricity, electrical activity at its center. And that is the heart. So heart is the sources of the electrical activity of the body. Body can be compared with the solar system. Heart can be compared with the sun. And it is surrounded by the multiple systems of the body like the neurology, electrolytes, endocrinology, and respiration. All the system are nourished by the heart. And existence of all the system depends on the existence of the heart. So heart is the center of the body. And that is the sources of electrical activities of the body. And same, the heart does two things. The mechanical events, that is the main target or main function of the heart. That is the pumping of the heart. That is done by the systole and diastole. And it is actually translation of the electrical activity of the heart. So heart can be compared not at the sources of the electrical source, that is the generator. Heart can be also compared with the transformer. It can transform the electrical activity and convert it to the mechanical activity that is the systole and diastole. And the most important thing is that for the understanding of the ECG, the electrical systole follows the mechanical systole. That is the mechanical activity is preceded by the electrical activity. This is the actually synchrony of the electrical mechanical activity of the heart. P wave represents the atrial depolarization and P wave follows that is the atrial systole. Same way, the QRS complex initiates or marks the ventricular depolarization, but the ventricular mechanical systole consists from the R wave to the T wave. That is the, both the, that is the systole and the, that is the depolarization and depolarization. So this is the relation between the electrical activity with the mechanical activities of the heart. And this concept is very much important during the ECG guided echocardiography. And this is another slide. This is a very well-known slide, actually presented in all textbooks of the physiology, like the Guyton, Gannon, every textbook of the slide. Here, there is a coordination between the interrelationship between the electrical activity, hemodynamic activity, and the all other mechanical activities of the heart. We can see the ventricular depolarization marks the onsets of the mitral valve closure and aortic valve opening that the first heart sound. And again, the ending of the T wave marks the second heart sound. So this is how there is a coordination between the electrical, mechanical, hemodynamic activities of the heart. So this is the actually electrical activity initiates, coordinates, all the physiological events within the heart during the cardiac cycle. And one cardiac cycle is the unit of functional unit of the heart activity. So this is how the electrical activities are. So there is another chapter of a textbook of the ECG written by Andrew T. Reisner and others. The title of the chapter is the physiological basis of the electrocardiogram. They told ECG understanding needs electrophysiology of the single cell, propagation of the electrical activity through the myocardium, physiology of specific structure of the heart like the atrium, SNO, DV node like this, that is physiology of each structure of the heart. And finally, all that events that leads to the miserable electrical signal that is the ECG. So understanding of the ECG knows understanding all the activities of the heart electrical and physiological activity of starting from the single cell to myocardium to specific structure and finally the recording of the electrical activities of the heart. And thus, contrary to the general belief, we have a general conception that abnormal ECG is equal to abnormal heart. But this is not true as because ECG does not directly measure the electrical voltage, does not directly measure it indirectly measures the electrical behavior of the myocardium. And there is no single cause for abnormal ECG. There are multiple causes of differential diagnosis for the abnormal ECG. So abnormal ECG does not mean the abnormal heart. The extreme examples of this kinds of the limitation of ECG is the stage D heart failure, where despite the stage D heart failure, the patient may have the normal ECG. So ECG does not always tell the truth or the represent the condition of the heart, it always describes the physiological status of the heart, electrical behavior of the heart. So the correct dogma 
about the ECG, about the language of the electrical language of the heart is that we must need correlation between ECG diagnosis and clinical diagnosis, must correlation between the ECG diagnosis and clinical diagnosis. ECG diagnosis and clinical diagnosis are not the same. There is some example, this is how the physiological basis helps to give the diagnosis. This is one of the ECG of a patient. This patient told the, he has got the paroxysmal palpitation different time, but most of the time always he has got this kinds of the normal ECG. But once upon a time, the patient has got signs to record such kind of the electrical, that is the, some kinds of the pulsation in the throat, that is the neck. So this is the proof. This physiological finding is a proof. This patient has got some of the, uh, that is the loss of synchronization within the heart, and that gives rise to the retrograde pulsation in the neck. And this is one of the classic example of the SVT and particularly the AVNRT, where the both the ventricles and atrium contract simultaneously. This is one of the example of the ECG of SVT, that is narrow complex regular tachycardia. Narrow complex regular tachycardia. We can see only the QRS complex. There is no evidence of the P wave. So the P waves must be within the QRS complex. As for example, we can see from this. Uh, that is re-entry phenomena. That is both the ventricle and the atrium contract simultaneously in case of the AVNRT or the POA may be just after the QRS complex depending on the speed of retrograde activation of the uh, uh, impulses from AVNO to the atrium. So depending on the condition, most of the time we cannot see any of the POA and at that situation, there will be simultaneous contraction of both the ventricles and atrium and that gives rise to the such kinds of the neck pulsation. This is, there is no alternative diagnosis or differential diagnosis is not needed in such of situation when there will be such kinds of the ECG with this kinds of the neck pulsation. And even this normal ECG does not exclude the presence of the disease when this kinds of the neck pulsation is present. So this is the beauty of the physiological finding of the ECG. And another kinds of the physiological findings are there will be irregular neck pulsation that can be happened when there will be ir irregular uh, dyssynchrony between the atrium and ventricle as it can happen during the complete heart block. So the neck pulsation can also dictate the presence of the complete heart block. This is one of the example, and this is another the example of physiological findings. And again, these kinds of the finding can be even helped to the differential diagnosis of the white complex tachycardia. When the patient has got the white complex tachycardia, but these kinds of the regular neck pulsation, he may have the aberrant supraventricular contraction that is the SV with the broad complex QRS tachycardia. But when the broad complex tachycardia will have got such, such kinds of the uh, irregular neck pulsation, possibly there should be the VT. So even this physiological findings that is neck pulsation can help to differentiate within the and different, that is a wide complex take idea when it presents. This is not expected to present in all the cases, but when it presents, is that got the tremendous value for the differential diagnosis. So this is the beauty of the electrical, that is a physiological finding for the differential diagnosis of the ECG. So some of the differential physiological clues also help to uh, give the diagnostic clue, as for example, when there will be syncope like the neck pulsation, some of the patient may have the syncope with the preceding that is the taking that is palpitation may follow the syncope. In that case, this leads to the diagnosis that is a very rapid ventricular tachycardia or atrial fibrillation with WBW syndrome or AV block or sinus arrest. That is palpitation follows syncope. When palpitation follows syncope, these are the differential diagnosis can give and again, when the, there is a long-standing recurrent syncope without collapse lasting for more than three years, that indicates presence of the SVT. But when there is a syncope, every time there is collapse, this can be the VT. So this is the correlation of the physiological findings as well as the some ECG evidence can give the clinical diagnosis in addition to the ECG diagnosis. So abnormal ECG is not the abnormal heart always. Abnormal ECG means the abnormal physiology, that is true. There must be, there should be some abnormal physiology within the heart. There may not be the structural heart disease. As for example, these are the examples. As, as for example, some of the patients may have the 
WBW syndrome. There is a WBW pattern ECG without symptom, long QT syndrome without clinical problem, Brugada syndrome asymptomatic. That is the PVC is asymptomatic, atrial fibrillation asymptomatic or AV block. So these are the examples. These are the abnormal ECG findings, but does not always the abnormal heart. These are the examples of the abnormal physiology. So before going to comment about the ECG, we must have some of the self-check, like we should not, don't make up your mind to give the comment too early. Avoid, we have to avoid premature jargon conclusion about the ECG. Try to look at the previous ECG and don't simply give the eyeball measurements when it is required. We have to use the caliper and to give the actual measurements as because of millisecond by millisecond is very much important sometimes. And most important, we have to try to find out the A, B, A, B relation, P, QRS, and P, QRS morphology. And finally, you have to create a differential diagnosis and must not always we have to consider the clinical context. So these are the actually basic rules, self-check rule, self rules for giving final comment about the ECG. We have to avoid the jargon conclusion about the ECG. So these are the some physiological properties of the heart or electrical properties of the heart, automaticity, excitability, conductivity, and contractility. All these physiological properties or physiological function or electrical function of the heart can be explained by the ECG. Actually, whole ECG is the explanation of the uh, physiology. This is one of the example when I can say, that is the what physiology it tells this ECG. From this ECG, we can see about the physiology of the heart. We can see two kinds of the automaticity, two kinds of the automaticity. This is the automaticity of the sinus rhythm. This is the sinus beat, PQRS, 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 but this is one of the abnormal beat. There is no piece. This is not the not sinus beat. This must be, that is the PVC. So there are two kinds of the automaticity. That is the sinus automaticity and another ectopic automaticity from where these PVCs are coming. So these two kinds of the automaticity can be explained from this ECG. And another physiology we can see, this PVC, there is a slurring at the downward, that is the, at the ST segment or the uh, one part of the T wave, that is the down part of the T wave. So this is the presence of the, possibly this is the retrograde P wave. So this patient also had got the retrograde conduction of the AP node. So from this ECG, we can see, that is the automaticity, normal integrate conduction of the AV node, as well as the retrograde conduction of the AV node. And this WPW, that is this patient may have the both kinds of the abnormality. So we can see also there is a narrow complex QRS and also the broad complex QRS. This narrow complex QRS presents, that is the normal conduction system conduction. And this is, this represents, that is the, this uh, QRS complex actually not using the normal physiological conduction system that is the conduction through the myocardium. So they are, they are taking the longer time and producing the abnormal T wave. So these are the examples. So these are the physiological findings or the uh, physiological properties of the heart we can see from this single ECG. And from this, depending on the narrow complex and the wide complex ECG, we can classify the ECG. That is the normal QRS wide, intermediate QRS wide, and the broad QRS complex, depending upon the speed of conduction is because from the ECG or the, from the physiology, you know, that is the different parts of the heart has got the different speed of the conduction. As far as there is a specific type of the conduction velocity in the atrium, conduction velocity in the ventricular muscle, conduction velocity at the Parkinson fiber that is the highest. So depending upon the QRS width, we can also comment or we can also give some idea about the physical properties or physiological properties of the conduction system of the heart, how this electrical impulse is going from here to there, and what are the system they are using, whether they are using the normal physiological conduction system, whether the physiological conduction system is okay or pathological, or whether the impulse is using the abnormal physiological system that is the myocardium or not. So, Depending on the wide of the QRS complex, we give some physiological properties of the heart also. And the automaticity of the heart, automaticity is one of the properties. 
and every parts of the has got the automaticity, the highest automaticity rate is the AC node that is followed by the AV node that is the 40 to 60 ventricular muscle and the Parkinson's system from about there is a higher rate of uh, rate of automaticity from AC node downwards. So there is a definite specific types of the automaticity at the different parts of the heart. And this automaticity depends upon the speed of repolarization, that is depolarization during the phase four of the action potential. This is the phase four action potential of the non-pacemaker cell. And this is the phase four action potential of the pacemaker cell. This is going upward, sloping upward. That is a spontaneous depolarization happening during the phase four. And this property replaces the spontaneous depolarization. And when there will be highest rate of the spontaneous depolarization of a single cell that can be have got some the abnormal automaticity. So like this, this is the uh, actually non-spacemaker cell uh, automaticity. That is, the, that is the horizontal type of the phase four depolarization. And this is the sloping upwards of the phase four depolarization. And when this kind of the automaticity appears at the different parts of the action potential, they can produce the different kinds of the ECG abnormalities or arrhythmia like this. This is the appearance of the abnormal automaticity that is high speed of automaticity during the phase four, or this is appearance of the abnormal automaticity during the phase three of the action potential, or during the latter part of the phase four of the action potential. And depending of appearance of such kinds of the abnormal automaticity at the different parts of the action potential, there is different nomenclature and all these kinds of the abnormal appearance of the automaticity can give abnormal types of the ECG or different types of the arrhythmia. And this is possible when there will be some pathology of the electrical environment of the heart. And not only the abnormal automaticity, the heart has also some kinds of the refractoriness or excitability. That is refractoriness or excitability is another example. That is another physiological properties of the heart. From the ECG, we can see there is absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period. The absolute refractory period is actually last from the beginning of the QRS complex up to the mid part of the T7. This is the absolute refractory period. And in action potential, this is phase zero, phase one, and phase two. And in ECG, the last part of the TOF and in action potential, it is the phase three or phase four of the action potential that represents the relative action potential. So this refractoriness or excitability of the heart can give some of idea about the some kinds of these abnormalities. So determinant is the determinant of excitability of the refractoriness of the heart depends upon the stimulation strength of the any kinds of the impulse or phase of the action potential when these kinds of the stimulus is going to the heart. So these are the two determinants where that these kinds of the abnormal impulse can give abnormal uh, response of the heart. Actually, the response of the heart depends upon several things like this. If the impulse is strong enough and is appear, that is uh, actually attributed during the relative refractory period or the resting state, there will be new action potential. If the stimulus is weak and actually imposed on the resting state or relative refractory period, no response. But whatever may be the strength of the stimulus, even it is strong enough, it is applied on the absolute refractory period, there will be no action potential. There will be graded response, only the graded response. So new action potential actually appeared when there will be strong stimulus on the resting state of the relative refractory period. And this is how the heart responds to any kinds of the abnormal impulses, whether intrinsic or extrinsic. And depending on this, this is one of the example. We can see these are the some distortion of the T wave, distortion of the T wave. It represents some kinds of the P wave coming from the atrium or AC node. It appeared on the that is the uh, just a later part of the T wave. And this is possibly the relative refractory period. So this T wave is not conducted. So this is, this T wave is not conducted as because this P, this P wave is not conducted as because this P wave is imposed on the relative refractory period. So this is not conducted. And this is the actually 
premature atrial activity as because this is early. If you compare this T wave and this wave, this is early, thus not here. If it were here, we can uh, consider it the second degree T wave. But if it is here, so this this this, this is actually taken from Abdullah Zamil CCG, who has posted in the WhatsApp. So I have taken from there. So this is one of the examples that is blocked PVC, that blocked APC, that is the APC is blocked in the T wave. That is a relative refractory period of the T wave. And this is one of the example how the relative refractory period helps to prevent the some kinds of the abnormal conduction of the P wave. But this relative refractory period sometimes can be widened, can be prolonged. As for example, this is one of the example. This is the long QT. Here the T wave is lengthened, HT segment is lengthened. So there is the prolongation of the QT interval, prolongation of the systole, prolongation of the relative refractory period. So the heart electrical system is exposed to the premature bit to interact and they can be conducted and produce some kinds of the arrhythmia. This is one of the example. This is one of the example where I don't know how this was actually produced, either abnormal automaticity or triggered activity or re-entry, but this represents some kinds of the chaotic electrical activity where there is no definite cardiac cycle. There is no definite or defined cardiac cycle. So there is no cardiac output, no pulse blood pressure. So this is the chaotic electrical activity, either ventricular fibrillation or polymorphic VT, but this is the chaotic electrical activity. And as there is no cardiac output, no blood pressure, the patient is clinically dead, but still the patient is electrically active, alive, clinically dead, but electrically active, alive as because heart is still working in this manner, but we are not getting the cardiac output, not getting the blood pressure, so patient is clinically dead. And in this situation, patient, patient may survive even up to 10 minutes. Up to 10 minutes, this patient gets survived. And only 5% of the patient may have chance to back to the normal sinus rhythm spontaneously. Either, otherwise, the 95% of the patient will die if there is no immediate intervention within the 10 minutes. And each minute, there will be 10% loss of the survival chance, 10% loss of the chance of the survival. And there are three phases of this 10%, that is the uh, 10 minutes time. That is the uh, electrical phase, four minutes, hemodynamic phase, four to 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, there will be the metabolic phase, there will be acidosis something, and almost the chances of recovery is irreversible. So this is the, but why I'm showing this type of ECG? Actually, this is the time when there is some electrical activities and there is no electrical activities, but there is no mechanical actually performance of the heart as because the electrical activities are chaotic and we have to beg this patient to the sinus rhythm and how this is possible by the electrical shock, which can give rise to the graded response during this time. That is the graded response. That is the defibrillation produce the graded response of the electrical activities. This graded response prolongs the refractory period and this prolonged refractive period prevents the heart for the entry of the any kinds of the ectopic bits during the time. So there will be the graded response, prolonged refractory time, no ectopic entrance. So there will be chances of escape rhythm that is the sinus rhythm. This is how the defibrillation works during the time. And this physiological concept is used for the therapy. And this is another ECG. And I'm trying to see what is we can see from this ECG, what is the physiological concept from we can hear. This is the shows there is the delta wave that is the hybrid conduction over the ventricle, for both from the accessory pathway and from the normal conduction system. This is the hybrid QRS complex. And this is another type of the QRS complex not preceded by the P wave. So this must be the ventricular previous complex. So these are conducted through the accessory pathway as well as the normal conduction system as the PR is short and there is the delta wave. And this is actually conducted through the myocardium, not produced, that is not initiated by the sinus rhythm. And this is conducted through the myocardium. So this is one kind of the physiology you can see. And another physiology you can see, there is the slurring of the P wave. So this should be the retrograde P wave. So this patient has got the retrograde epinodal conduction. In addition to the integrate epinodal conduction, this patient also had got the retrograde conduction. So this patient may be presented with both 
anti-grade, orthotropic, and antidromic SVT. So these are the physiological clues we can, can have, or we can predict from the ECG about the physiological status of the heart. And this is another ECG. Actually, I don't know its diagnosis. I have shown this ECG. I want to know this diagnosis from this forum and physiological explanation of this kinds of this ECG. I have got some differential diagnosis, whether it can be sinus arrest, junctional rhythm, atrial fibrillation, or other than these kinds of, that is uh, any diagnosis other than this. So this was the last slide of my presentation. And this slide is open for discussion. I am inviting any faculties to comment. But uh, first of all, I want to invite Dr. Tushar. Can you make any comment? And yeah. Tushar will be followed by some of faculties. Can you give any comment about this diagnosis, Dr. Tushar? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, this is 12 lead ECG, and there is no obvious P wave in any of the leads, but uh, two broad complex QRS are present, which are coming at a uh, definite pattern. Two QRS at an interval of, uh, at some interval, and these are coming. So to me, and if you follow lead V1, if you follow lead V1, then uh, the first QRS, uh, the V1, the first QRS, the T wave in that QRS, there is some indentation. And it seemed to me that this is sinus arrest with two junctional escape. For me, this is sinus arrest with two junctional or uh, ventricular escape bit in a pair. I am not in favor of atrial fibrillation. So uh, for me, this is uh, this patient must have sinus arrest with two junctional or ventricular escape bits. A, a if you look at the lead FEF, lead FEF, the first yes. bit it doesn't have any P wave preceding it, so it must be an ectopic one. But after his T wave in the later yes, part, there is, there's a there P wave. Is, uh, P wave with first degree heart block, then the second bit is sinus bit, FEFA. Then there is a long pause, then an escape bit, again, a P wave. They superimpose on the T wave of the preceding uh, QS. That was that was I'm trying to say that V1 yeah. the camera by A right. the camera time on a chill. The first one that is the escape, or following that, there is a P wave that might be non-sinus in origin, ectopic, uh, ectopic atrial uh, rhythm, which is conducted with a uh, first degree AV block type. And then again, there is a junctional bit and followed by again a non-sinus actual activity and this cycle is repeating but it is not actual fibrillation per se it is not actual fibrillation one thing that i'm sure it is not actual fibrillation so i am in favor of sinus arrest with uh, junctional escape bits or uh, junctional escape bit basically sir. Dr. Tushar. Sir. Finally, finally, you want to have a comment from Rubik, sir, but before that, yes. anyone, Dr. Zamil? Or anyone want to make comment before Rubik, sir? Sir, I'd like to add something, sir, All with right. the permission. Govindo, right, sir. I, I go with uh, Dr. Wadud, what he said. Most likely, this um, long pause after that uh, after the long pause the qrs complex is uh, from escape bit from the junctional tissue followed by t waves seems to be quite peaked it might be that the uh, next uh, p wave of the next bit is superimposed on the previous t wave thank you govindo Sir, I'd like to add something. Uh, it's a uh, form of group beat, uh, atrial ectopics, uh, some are uh, conducted or some are non-conducted. 
uh, already what uh, sir mentioned abf lead abf uh, there is a uh, tiny pof small pof distorted the tof and also uh, uh, pof small p is also in v2 v3 v5 uh, v4 v5 v6 as well there is non conducted and with junctional escape followed by uh, another uh, at atrial ectopics it's a group uh, bt i think sir yeah, i think there's an incomplete rbb also as well thank you sir sure and i mean we we always get this ecg anytime ecg we get an ecg first of all we need to determine where do i start first of all if you look at the qrs it is wide but if you look at lead v1 it is rsr pattern and lead one R with deep S. So definitely it looks like a typical right bundle morphology. And that tells me that this is most likely supraventricular origin. So where do I start? I'm going to start with, if you look at lead V2, after where it is written V2, there is a QRS complex, but there is no P wave. But in the T wave, there is something. And that, so if I start with that P wave, I can make an assumption the way Wadud mentioned that this is a sinus P wave conducted with first degree AV block. Patient has marked sinus bradycardia, we get junction on beat. But the question is, there is, I always think about a little bit differently also. Another, another possibility can be that somebody has a junctional escape. If I start from the junctional escape, it conducts retrogradely. And then through a dual physiology enters integrally. If that is the case, then I'll have to prove that it is negative in lead two, three AVF, which is difficult for me to do. But I will buy all those explanation that start with the P wave on the T wave, first degree AV block, patient has marked sinus bradycardia they're followed by junctional escape beat. And the second explanation will be a junctional beat retrograde, which then conducts integrally. To prove that, I have to look at a long rhythm strip. If I can find a place where this retrograde wave doesn't conduct integrately, then my diagnosis will be confirmed that this is, I am right. But I think other explanation is the one that is to go. Thank you, Sashi. Yeah, I have one comment. I think I agree with you, but another possibility that uh, when we see the, those two group beads, uh, could be ectopic beads that one conduct definitely uh, it starts with junctional escape, then one uh, etro ectopic bead that conducted, but the second one blocked. Is it possible? Yeah, the Will question is, that there and is, then again it goes to junctional. Yeah. Oh, second, but we have then we don't see any distortion on the T wave. That was the problem part. With sir, the <coughs> sir, uh, yeah. sir, if you don't mind, sir, if we uh, look at the ECG, sir, uh, yeah. the following the second QRS, the T wave is seem, seems to be a distorted, a so, sort of distorted in a lead uh, V3-4. Yes, sir. I have to look at it. Atar, sir, okay. can you please uh, show the ECG, sir? Mm. Is it possible, I, sir? Uh, again, I'm in trouble. I think I should stop. Oh, 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 okay, sir, okay, sir. Sir, is it possible that uh, uh, the way uh, Adisa was telling that uh, following junctional beat, there is one atrial, uh, there is one sinus or atrial beat, which is conducted with a slightly longer QR, uh, PR interval. And the next uh, P that is distorted, uh, somewhat distorted the T is non-conducted because it appears in, uh, the, it comes in the refractory period. Is it possible? Sure, it's a possibility, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, ultimately, uh, underlying rhythm, uh, uh, what is this uh, ECG, rhythm? Underlying rhythm, either well, sinus or say, junctional or... Well, start. okay. So if we, if we agree with, if you agree with me and Wadud, my diagnosis yes, would be sinus bradycardia with first degree AP block with junctional escape bits. What yeah, might be the underlying cause, sir, here? Probably patient has six sinus syndrome. Six sinus. Thank yeah. you, sir. But Ravik bhai, I like the uh, 
Atar um, uh, headline, the physiologic diagnosis. We want to know what is the atrial mechanism of depolarization, what is the relationship of AV, and what is the ventricular mechanism, right? Mm -hmm. So if, I mean, if, if it is sign and patient has loss of consciousness times two, right? The clinical context. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is the most lo logical diagnosis? Because we need to next think what to do for the patient, because looks like there is junctional escape rhythm happening, heart rate dropping, I don't know the the escape. Uh, I, I don't know the atrial uh, depolarization that is happening time to time. It may be sign as Brady and and first degree AV, but the fact is there is junctional escape happening at times. So what do you do well, with the loss of clinically? How old is the patient? Sixty-five, sir. 65. I mean, if you're somebody with syncope, this is the first thing that yeah. will come into mind exactly. is six, six sinus syndrome, even though it's a relatively young person, but we do see six sinus syndrome in young people also. And there is there is a right bundle also. Of course, of course. And if you look at the second uh, P wave, there is a first degree AV block in that. So there is a little bit of conduction problem also. Because I think more, I like your first explanation more because first degree AV block and then going into junctional escape regularly, I don't know, it, may, it doesn't make sense to me, it, but rather a junctional escape with retrograde uh, yeah, the atrial yeah. depolarization, that makes more sense. Yes, I, I think that is because otherwise to explain that constant relationship is very difficult. Yes, yes. You're absolutely right. But I wanted to put the other way around because it, it comes simpler. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think we should uh, we should go to look at some ECGs. Uh, I, I got this ECG from Motion um, uh, yesterday. Um, I want, um, do we have polls uh, or somebody, if somebody could from the audience would come and explain this ECG to me. So this is a seven month old baby with recurrent syncope. Uh, we'd like to have some participants who are interested, please raise the hand. And also we'll give the poll and then one participant if could join us. Uh, Neha, please keep the poll for 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Okay. So just after 15 seconds, the poll will close and we'll have the result. Okay. okay. So we have two diagnoses, uh, sinus rhythm with three to one conduction and complete heart block. Um, anybody from the audience would like to join me? Sudhir. Yes, we have uh, Mr. Sudhir. Mr. Sudhir, can you please, uh, Dr. Sudhir, can you please uh, give some explanation to this ECG. So I, I let should they come up, but the reason I put this three to one conduction and whoever answered three to one conduction makes some sense. If we look at my, um, where is my pointer? My pointer here, there is a P wave, P wave, third one conducted. However, if you look backward, there is no such constant relation. So if you look at the last RR interval, it looks like three to one conduction. And that's where you look at carefully throughout the long rhythm tip, it's complete heart block. So no question about it. My question is, why is this patient passing out? What, are the, what is the cause? Shudir or whoever wants to answer this, and then we'll go, I'm going to go to the next ECG. Sir, uh, there may be two explanations if I'm... Yeah. Uh... Yes, sir. One is that because of the, the baby is only seven month old. Yes. So he needs very high rate of ventricular rate to, okay. for his body requirements. Okay. But at his age or at heart age, the heart rate is too low. So the perfusion or the uh, due to hyperperfusion, 
she may pass out. He or she may pass out. So you are saying that this heart rate of 42 can make the person pass out? For the seven month old, uh, because the age is only seven months. Okay. The rate Any is other too low. Any other? And another explanation might be because of the presence of this too low heart rate, the compensatory mechanism might put some ectopic focus to uh, take command and resulting in uh, SVT or VT, which okay. might result in passing out of the of that of the baby. Any, anybody else? So look at this. The QRS is narrow, so that means it's a junctional escape rhythm. One possibility is that why do patients pass out with come because they have no contraction at all. So they, they, there'll be a period where there is no heartbeat at all and patient pass. It is unlikely that somebody will be passing out at the heart rate of 42. But one of the things that has happened here, look at the QT interval is very long. It is 600 millisecond. And if we correct it, even after correction, it will be long. So this is the same patient next to CG. This is a halter monitor. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to look at these two ECGs. Look at this QRS complex, long QT, and then there is three beat. And then you can see here, this is the strip and this is the expanded one. You can see that the, there are PVCs and then the patient goes into this polymorphic VT and it stops. And this was the reason the patient was passing. As Sushar mentioned that some kind of ventricular arrhythmia. And this is another episode. So this, all this episode, so it was not the complete heart block which made the child pass out. These were episode of torsad that made the, please remember the first thing torsad was described was in complete heart block patient, not in electrolyte abnormal. that came later on. Question is, what are you going to do with this patient? Are you going to put a pacemaker in or a defibrillator in? Sir, uh, as this is the brady induced case, so yes. putting a simple pacemaker will solve the uh, problem. And Perfect. giving the, no okay. Yes, so and no question. So one, this is one, one, one key concept for the audience because basically when there's a QT is prolonged and, and most commonly what happens is bradycardia induced uh, VT. That's why we need to prevent the bradycardia so that that will prevent future problem. That's the pacemaker I think that Tushar has mentioned. Uh, that would be the right answer. Yeah, so the pacemaker, and this, well, I'll definitely do an echo, but in a seven year or seven month old baby, even if patient is ICD, you can't really do it. But even if this patient was adult person, 60 year old with this ECG, if the echo shows normal left ventricular function, I'll just put a pacemaker in. And that is the answer to this question. Um, uh, Hafiz, any comment on it? A any, any reversible underlying causes? Yes. No, this patient, everything was normal. This okay. is, he was born with this. This is congenital complete heart. Congenital, heart. like a mom lupus or something? I, I don't know the story. No, okay. I okay. don't know the story. But this is the narrow QRS escape. So this is, but we have seen this similar ECG in adults also. But the reason I mentioned the defibrillator is that just because patient went into VF doesn't mean that this patient needs a defibrillator. This is a bradycardia induced torsade. And, uh, and as Hafiz mentioned, if there is, there is no other mm -hmm. cause, and most of them reversible cause um, uh, should be treated and um, just put a pacemaker in this in this person. So in the in the adult, maybe it is relevant to mention Rafik Bhai. Sometimes we see this bradycardia dependent long QT and torsad, and there is acquired causes, you know, uh, electrolyte imbalance, a psychotic meds. We uh, try to give isoprenaline and then. Uh, give an overdrive pace by time, and then QT becomes shorter, and then the uh, torsad goes away. Absolutely. I mean, this is you see, interesting thing about medicine that to give a treatment is an easier decision, a harder decision to have the courage not to give a treatment. And that's where our specialty comes in. You discuss with the patient, you explain what we are doing, that look, you do not need it. I had a patient who, 18 year old kid with hypokalemia and came with VF. And the push was this patient is the ICD. But I said, no. And I sent a second opinion uh, to Johns Hopkins, to Hugh Colkins, and he said, Rafik, I'm glad that you said no ICD because this patient had a potassium of 2.1.
and you correct the abnormality and you take care of that problem. So um, we have a little time. Sure, sir. Okay, I'm going to um, do a few questions. Uh, somebody, uh, let's give a poll. Yes, sir. Sir, the, is this the ECG? Yes. Okay. Uh, Kambul Bhai, please arrange the poll and give it for 10 seconds. Do we have the poll, sir? Okay. So no, five people answered. Um, three said normal ECG, and one said sinus removed left ventricle enlargement, and other was normal, and one said sinus removed left ventricle hypertrophy. So yeah, these are all choices, but obviously, if you suddenly look at this ECG, what does it look like? It looks like a normal ECG. Um, initially, if you look at three and AVF looks like leftward, but it lead two is positive. So, and there is no evidence of left and enlargement. Look at V1, uh, P wave is normal. P wave duration may look a little wide, but here in V1, it doesn't fulfill the criteria. So this is a normal ECG. Um, so only thing that can uh, distract is that the appearance of the T wave, yes. uh, especially in V4. In in V4, V4 and lead two. Yes, the, so that's what speaking. it is. Exactly, but look at the duration. You see, that's where, you know, um, uh, Athar mentioned something. Just don't go by the gut feeling, measure it. So look at the other leads also. Look at lead V1. It looks positive, negative, duration is fine. There is some slurring, sometimes P wave duration. So yes, it can be, but overall, this is a normal ECG. Yes, sir. Uh, Okay, so this one. Kamal Bhai, give the poll and give, keep it for 15 seconds. Okay, so I like, I like, uh, tied up, tied up, yeah, it's between two and three. Between two and three, okay. So, um, two nobody and three. Oh, let me understand this. Old septal, but Ravik Bhai, I, I like your EKG, but I like more your options because <laughs> you are simply, <laughs> you are simply, <laughs> challenging that what is the criteria for left atrial enlargement? What is the criteria for right atrial enlargement? What is the criteria for our right ventricular hypertrophy? I like that. So if it is a two, what is the criteria for old septal MI in the presence of right bundle? Okay, so I'm going to bring this up. Hafiz, you, 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 you are on the right track, so let's discuss this. So axis is rightward axis. Um, no question about it, um, because I put this one, uh, the way I did it is lead one is, is negative, so it's on this side. And then lead um, three is, uh, lead AVF is positive, so it's between zero and 90. And then if you look at lead two, it's 
slightly positive. So it's between here. So it's a right accident. Now I will show you uh, what Hafiz mentioned. What looked like a septal MI is actually not. It does, first of all, there is a small R wave. Even if there is no R wave, that, that key wave, Hafiz did not fulfill the criteria of septal MI. Yeah. It's too narrow. So that's one part. And look at this um, P wave. I have enlarged it. You can see it is three small yeah. square, which is 0.3 millivolt. Anything about 0.25 we write it in enlargement. Mm -hmm. Look at this lead V1 enlarged. And it is, it is about a box and deeper than one box. So it is by a trail enlargement. So as Hafiz said, I mean, I, you know, we always have to think like that, that look, look at the alternatives the question choices should not be random. And then look at the right ventricular hypertrophy criteria. More than 110 degrees, RS ratio in V1 more than one, which it is true. R in V1 more than 0.7 millivolt, which is true, is about one millivolt. And then QR in V1, if this was a Q wave, that would have supported right ventricular hypertrophy. And it doesn't fulfill. So we are fulfilling all these criteria. And then, of course, we have differential diagnosis, isolated LVA, WPW, COPD, true posture In fact, we have to. Right bundle doesn't fit in here because the QRS is narrow. And when, if, look at this. When I, I enlarged it, you see one, two, two and a half box only, less than 20. So it's less than 110 millisecond, 100 millisecond. So it's not wide QRS. So it doesn't fulfill right bundle blank block. So this is. My diagnosis was uh, basically um, sinus rhythm, bilateral enlargement, enlargement with right ventricular right, hyper hypertrophy. Yes. Yeah. Number four, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, assalamu yeah. alaikum, sir. Uh, yes. Can we put another differential diagnosis of pre previous ECG that the right axis 110 degree with RVH tall P? Can we explain with uh, ASG with severe pulmonary hypertension? Yes, I mean, um, so that's where comes the physiology. Now, how do mind is getting into the physiology? Now, how old is the patient? 34 I'm year old. Cause. Yeah, and it's a possibility. Yes, no question. But uh, uh, for the, for, uh, that is a possibility. But I tell you, if you bring the ASD, at least for exam purposes, you need to show that there is a right bundle. If yes. Only right because. It, it, they, they, this is the expectation in the exam. I mean, this is like a driving test. Right bundle and then left axis, ostium primum, right bundle with right axis is a ostium secondum. Okay. So the board, be, it's a board question, right, Hafiz? Board, board, yeah, board question. So it's like, a, it's like a DJAC reaction, but it is possible for the right ventricular hypertrophy to be with that. Yeah, sure. And then it's pulmonary hypertension, COPD also possible. But yeah. fantastic EKG. I, I wanted to add one thing, Rafik Bhai. Yes. Even if you think that there is a Q wave in V1, right? Yes. This EKG is so good, there's nothing in the V2, V3. I mean, yeah. imagine a septal Q, but there is only one lead. So I think it is a home run to ignore that. Yes, yes, so there's no question about it. So thank you. Um, but uh, as Naro mentioned that we need to keep all this in mind. I mean, unfortunately for adult cardiologists, we always try to ignore the right side of the heart and Naro is a pediatrician, of course, uh, she'll pay attention to this. How about this one? Kamal Bhai, keep the poll ready and keep the poll for 10 seconds for this ECG. So I tell the ER physician one thing, Rafik Bhai. Mm -hmm. The uglier the EKG, Less likely ischemia. Don't call me. The uglier <laughs> it is, <laughs> the uglier the EKG, the less likely is coronary.
Okay, I think um, we accept both, right? C and D, anybody comment on this? So the choices are C and D. So, I mean, I mentioned that reverse array progression. At one time I thought, is it possible that somebody swapped the lead? V1, V2, V3 became V4, V5, V6. It's a possibility. Very, very remote because that is very creative to do. I, yes. Second issue is that if you look at the P wave in V1, it's biphasic. If I had swapped this lead so much, then it will not be like this. P wave will be upright in this lead. So this is this is not a lead swap or anything. So I, I'm, I'm, I think this is a good, good uh, answers. Um, so here, I'm, di I'm dying to know what is the underlying cardiac issue. Well, unfortunately, I, I did not. This is the 2003 ECG. So <laughs> I did not write. So you look at this QR pattern in, in V1, which is consistent with right ventricular hypertrophy, um, V6 poor hour progression. And so again, the criteria, I have put in the criteria, um, all those criteria. Remember this, I mean, a lot of times we don't remember, but you can put this in your iPhone. So what you do, you look at the CG, you think that this is right ventricular hypertrophy, then we confirm your diagnosis um, uh, that yes, my numbers are correct. Yeah, there's no need this day, day and age to remember all these numbers, right Hafiz? You can't remember, yeah. you can just pull it up, but you have to, you have to suspect, you don't ignore the ECG, you just look at it. Now the question would be, um, the other question is, some of them have clinical relevance, some of them don't. But even then, understanding it exercises our brain. Um, um, one of the things, I'm going to, I think probably stop after this, one of the things that, why, why did Atar give this lecture of physiological basis? I think theory of any medicine, any science is important. Theory gives rise to the future. And that's why Hafiz comes in. I am a practical guy. Hafiz goes into realm of theoretical of theory. Theory is important because theory gives the future and applied science gives the present. So understanding physiology, understanding mechanism is so important um, in this. I, I think we're going to- um, I, I have, a, I have uh, a question, sir, previous yes. CCG. So yes. why uh, poor progression or loss of height of ROA before to B6? What uh, if, uh, more, if we okay. think the right ventricular hypertrophy or right uh, uh, ventricular mass, uh, uh, right ventricular hypertrophy due to uh, 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 RB hypertrophy? And uh, yeah. yes, so right ventricular hypertrophy can rotate the heart leftward. Okay. So if, so, if so, this patient, if, you, if we had put a like V7, V8, V9, it our way will again get better, bigger. Now, LB mass is okay. LB mass is uh, normal. So uh, here, uh, height of uh, R wave in B4, B5, B6, usually uh, having normal. I think. Yes. Yeah. Why not? But Why not? This can, be, this can be consistent with primary pulmonary hypertension. This can be co consistent with pulmonary stenosis. It can be even consistent with ASD with severe pulmonary hypertension and RBH. And uh, yes. that all, all, I mean, the right heart is the right. big issue here. Well, Govinda, your yes, point is very valid. I, I understand what you are asking. What is happening? Yes. The place yes, where I have put the V6, left ventricle okay. is no longer there because right ventricle Rotate. has pushed it more, pushed yeah, it more yeah. to the left. So if yes, I had sir. put V7, V8, V9, then you will yes, find sir. the left ventricular signals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear, yeah. clear. Thank and you, not sir. does not this is not going to be dextrocardia. Yeah. No. Yes, sir. One ABL is normal. One yes. ABL. Yes. yes. All right. I think um, we should stop here. Um, right. Yeah. I, th I think let's stop here. Um, we are our discussion and thank you all for participating. So, Vigbe, can uh, I add one thing? Yes, please. I I have learned over the years that. You, the EP has EP mind, but practically I, I want I request everybody to get your slide calipers out. When you have a bradycardia, then map the QRS 
and understand what is the mechanism of ventricular depolarization, and then understand the mechanism of atrial depolarization, and then relationship between atria and ventricle. That measurement, eyeball, sometimes doesn't work. Because when we start measuring this, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, to Hafiz, the day I stopped using the caliper is the day my knowledge starts going down. Because then I rely on my imagination. So you're absolutely right. I mean, even to this day, when I sit down, when something is, even if it is obvious or not obvious, using a caliper um, is, is so important. If you don't have a caliper, take a piece of white paper and mark it. You can mark the QRS complexes and that's how you, you can move back and forth. So it's, it's so important. It is very, very important that you do the measurements. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your nice ACGs. Do you want to close the session or at all? Yes, sir. As is Chudri Hassan, Habib Bhai. I'm 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 Habib Sikasi. No, Habib Bhai. Actually, actually, we are expecting you in the next session. Sorry, sir. The electricity was out, so. You bolen? In our roster, actually, you are the speaker on the next session. There is the. Uh, so that is a Sunday and uh, next Sunday. 26th, 26th, sir. No, 20. uh, sorry, 25th, 25th, 25th 24th. of uh, September. 24th. Okay, I was waiting. 25th, sir. Achha. 25th, sir. 25th. 20 minutes, Taito. Uh, hmm. Sir, basically 30 minutes, no, then we no, discuss. No, no, no not 20 minutes, minutes actually. Uh, one day will be the basic and next day the clinical. The whole session is yours. Yeah, okay. Okay. Sir, one thing is uh, uh, I, I like to ask the right atrial enlargement in case of right atrial enlargement, is it mandatory all the uh, leads uh, POF uh, is enlarged or fulfill the criteria, all the leads? Is no, you cannot. You see, if you look at other leads, some of the leads are in, small. It is lead is mo important. Mostly inferior leads and inferior leads shows is best. Okay, thank you, sir. Govinto, it's important that uh, the, the uh, like uh, coronary angiogram, the worst case presentation, jikhani instal se bishi dekte baatcho sheetai tum door niba. Yes, sir. inferior lead the tumal exit jodi chinta kor current to upper theke niche ashte se kadi inferior lead chide ami. Right at the enlargement, that's enough. That's enough. Uh, in general, the sharpness of the P wave peak, Jodi P wave peak is sharp, that means it has to be Jodi amplitude common, that means the right at the enlargement, that's a possibility. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I am a person who has a little bit of knowledge. So that's why our there is an ECG study. We can do finding and point nearby for scoring. So, Shadaran to right atrial enlargement, but left atrial enlargement, weighted score is one, maybe two maximum. Main holo, the hypertrophy, but the main, the actor, the 10, yes, 10, total 10, the aglo, the ASD, which is the nine, are right atrial enlargement or not enlargement, the miscolle, which are the penalty call. So, which makes sense. Our Amadere can act a director initial was a uh, the ECC is fail kare. She 99 pile of lab nine general cardiology. Is it the fail man a fail? Oh, take care of cover security. Yeah, I think it's very important. I think half is a mother America con negative marking and multiple chairs, but except ECG, can you the acute MI miss correct? Can you the VF miss correct? That means you have killed a patient and you will get minus one, but that's the only few cases there is minus one. Um, otherwise, the rest of them are not. Thank you. 
জি জি কনক্লুড করেন মাধু ভাই আচ্ছা আমরা আমাদের শুধু এই কয়েকজন কি করে বাকি কি অফ করে দিবে জি 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 আপনি ইনস্ট্রাকশন দেন তাহলে ওরা করবে এটা কামরুল জি স্যার সব বন্ধ করুন আপনাদের অফ করে দিচ্ছি স্যার একটু সময় দিন স্যার অনেক পরিমজি আজম 